Hello YouTube, Blaze Templar here with week 6's analysis of the IPL, and quite honestly there's not a lot to say about this week because a lot of positions have been cemented for this week, no matter if they win or lose, uh, positions probably aren't going to climb a lot, but that being said, there are two games that are particularly important, but before I get into that, I have to make an unfortunate announcement, and that is the Dallas Dialgas has their coach, the Cobalt, or their coach. Cobalt, their coach, <laughs> wow, I've been trying to do this all day and I keep on stumbling over that, but Cobalt, their coach, has admitted that he may not be able to play any more games due to life issues, and I am sorry to hear that, uh, but I will leave him in the roster just in case he's able to come back and maybe pull something off, so he's still in the running in that regard, uh, but it does sound like he may be out of it, so... That's unfortunate. The other announcement is the New England Patriots may not be available for a few weeks, and so their record's probably not going to increase anytime soon, which is unfortunate, but there you go. Um, now that those unfortunate default messages are out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the games that matter. Uh, New York was supposed to face Dallas. Unfortunately, due to that default, that means basically New York is going to be 5-1. and one. Um so that game is kind of irrelevant just because of that. Um, but that being said, the other games of note are Nebraska Neuburns and the Chicago Flock, and then the Cleveland Crocodiles and California Clefas. I believe Colorado and New England are supposed to play, but um, if he defaults, naturally, Cal Colorado gets the win. Not going to help that much. It might just solidify his position in sixth. But that being said... Um, those two games that I mentioned, Nebraska and uh, Chicago again, and then the Cleveland-California games, Nebraska has to win. If they want to continue to stay in first, it has to be done. Uh, if they lose, their survival rate will go down to probably like 1.2% or something, or like 1.2, oh, yeah, 1.2 uh, survival, and that will basically put them at 5-1. and one. If Cleveland wins, that would mean that they Cleveland could potentially take the second place slot, New York would take the first, and Nebraska would take third. That's how big, uh, how important it is for Nebraska to win. Uh, for Cleveland, if they do win, it's not going to do a lot for their record this week, just because the other teams that are that they could climb over, uh, possibly the only climb he could get over is Colorado, but he'd have to get a very good survival rate. Outside of that, unfortunately, not a lot of movement upwards for Chicago. Now, going to the other game of importance is the Cleveland-California game. Um, they both basically have to win to have a good chance of moving up. Uh, California cannot afford to go 3-3. Three and three. It just cannot afford it. Uh, because then there would be a pretty big gap between it and uh, the California... Cleveland and Cleveland, which is a slot right above. Uh, Cleveland would be five and one, while California would be three and three. That would take quite a bit of effort to get back over, and Cleveland would have to lose a couple of games. So that being said, if Cleveland loses, goes four and two, they'd be basically four and two with California as well, and then it would just be basically whoever has the better surviving Pokemon rating, and well, right now it looks like uh, Cleveland would still eke over California. It's a very close number. So, that being said, neither team really can afford to lose. And um, I honestly think that could spawn a rivalry because they basically both have to win. Um, but, of course, I can't actually announce that these teams are rivals. Um, I'm just giving my opinion. Like, my opinion is Nebraska and New York are currently rival teams because just how important their game was and stuff like that. And that's usually how rivalries start. But now that that's out of the way, um, what's the biggest shift that could happen? Nebraska falling to third. That is the biggest position shift that could happen. Uh, New York could possibly rise up to first, but that basically depends on if Nebraska wins or loses. Uh, so it's kind of out of their hands, unfortunately, this week. Uh, Cleveland, uh, they could shift up to second, but that's kind of out of their hands, too, because uh, Nebraska has to lose. So a lot of teams, those 
other two top teams basically are reliant on Nebraska losing to take the first place, second place slot at the moment. But that being said, uh, they still have to win their games just so they have that potential to basically catch up and stay on the uh, edge there, if you will, where it's like, okay, if the top team slips up, we'll take over. They basically have to stay top-notch at that. So if Cleveland loses, that's not going to happen. They're not going to have a chance to get up to the second-place slot. It just is not going to happen. Uh, California, if they lose, they're not going to move up to third anytime soon, and maybe ever, depending on what how the rest of the season wraps up. So those the big game, of course, is that Cleveland-California game, uh, with the Nebraska game being basically... Nebraska can't afford to lose, um, but outside of that, it's that's basically this week. Um, we probably won't see a lot of shifts uh, outside of if Nebraska loses, but you never know. I mean, I could have misread something, and we see a big shift, but I don't see that happening. So, yeah, uh, week four was definitely the tipping point for a number of teams. Regardless, though, I've basically rambled on long enough. You've seen kind of what's going on, and that's basically all I can say for this week, so I'm going to end it here. Later.